Hey everyone, welcome back in the kitchen for another exciting week of, well, hearty, fun, full meals. Being the Italian that I am, I quite often get cravings that involve pasta. Anything pasta related, any size or shape of pasta is fine with me. I'll take it. And this time of year, like we've been doing, trying to keep things hearty and full and warm, comfort food. We're stuffing shells this week. I love making stuffed shells. And you know, there's all kinds of stuffed shell recipes out there. You know, the different types of stuffed pastas from ravioli to tortellini to stuffed shells. And a lot of time, especially with a stuffed shell recipe, it involves you know, a lot of cheeses and you get the, the three cheese recipe and and it's just cheesy and gooey and creamy and it's fun, but I like more in mine. I, I like my ice cream with a lot of crunch and I like stuffed shells with crunch. So what we're going to do today, we're going to stuff ours with sausage and this. Do you know what this shredded mess is? That? Not cabbage, if that's what you're thinking. This is radicchio. Radicchio. It is a type of, for those of you who may not know, it is in the lettuce family. It is a very, bitter is not a good word, but it's a very bitter, tart, crisp, flavored lettuce that when you cook it and you combine it with a few seasonings like oregano and basil, it has such a great finish. And we are going to take our sausage and our radicchio and saute it together and then mix it in a cheese sauce blend and then stuff it in these shell shells. Whew. Did I say shelves? No. Shells and then bake them and it's so good. We've got a lot to do. A lot of little steps that I want to go through and go over. So let's get started. First things first, you need your shells. You can totally make your own, sure, if you want to, or you can buy a nice shell. And the important thing to remember when you're shopping for your shells, you want the jumbo size, the biggest ones you can get, because you can get shells in different sizes, and you don't, the small ones, even when you, when you cook them, they're going to get even smaller. So you want the biggest ones you can find, a nice big 12 to 16 ounce bag of shells, and get them in a large pot of boiling water. Now shells take a little longer than other pastas to cook. They take about 14 minutes. Yeah, we want a nice al dente cooked shell and that takes a few minutes. So we're going to let those get started and while those are cooking we can prep our other items. I'm just going to let those start. It's going to take a few minutes. Here's what we need. We need onion. Nice sweet onion. Vidalia are fantastic, but if you're going to use a Vidalia onion, I suggest using just half of one. A whole Vidalia, that's a lot of onion. I got a nice small sweet onion and just chopped it up really thin, really fine. Took one head of radicchio and chopped it up. This made about one and three quarters cup, which is perfect. And we're going to take some ricotta cheese, some nice shaped Parmesan, and this beauty here, Fontina, love Fontina cheese, melts so well, has such a good sweet flavor, and it blends beautifully with the rest of this stuff. And I like to get a nice fresh block and shred it myself, you know, so I don't need it to look beautiful or be in any special way, but I want to make sure it's fresh. And the best way to do it is to shred it myself. So see, it doesn't take much to to grade this and Fontina is soft cheese so you want to be careful when you are grading it that you don't don't grate your fingers but it doesn't take much grate this down and there man look at that oh this is beautiful stuff I love Fontina cheese it's a great soft cheese so we've got our our cheeses we've got ricotta fresh parmesan fresh Fontina cheese sausage onion and while the pasta is cooking, we'll go ahead, we'll brown our sausage, cook our onion, throw in the radicchio, and get all that to 
cook and saute together and then we'll make our cheese mixture by the time we're done with all that the pasta should just about be ready then we'll get it out and I'm gonna show you how to make sure you cool it immediately it comes out of the water it sits in the colander and it's nice and hot it's going to continue to cook and it's going to keep getting softer we want to slow that down so we'll throw it in some cold water and make sure we stop that as much as possible but first let's brown all this get all this cooked and get it going so first things first we're going to get our saute pan nice and hot get some olive oil in there a tablespoon or so and let that start to warm up and as that's warming make sure that I've got all the ingredients I need I've got sausage I'm using turkey sausage and one of the reasons why in fact when I was doing the grocery shopping talking to my wife I said we need turkey sausage and she went okay turkey sa turkey sausage I said yes turkey sausage and here's why the flavor there's a lot less obviously fat and grease in turkey sausage there's a lot less flavor meaning it's not going to be overpowering at all. A while back, I made meatballs, and I varied from my recipe and made a different style of meatball and incorporated ground beef with sweet Italian sausage. And the flavor of the sausage was so overwhelming. It was so strong and so greasy, we couldn't even really enjoy them. And I've done more cooking since and changed the sausage. And I found that turkey sausage, since it's so lean, and it does have a fantastic flavor, but it's just not so greasy and strong. It goes really well in this recipe. So we've got turkey sausage, just half pound, eight ounces. And we've got our onion, and we're going to start cooking all that together. And first things first, we get that oil nice and hot, which it is. And believe it or not, I'm going to add on top of the oil just a little bit of butter. Just one tablespoon of butter. And that is purely for that buttery flavor. And as that is getting hot in the pan, we'll throw in the onion. Whew. And you hear sizzle right away, which is a favorite and also a necessity. Sizzle means hot. Hot pan means perfect for cooking. So I'll let that oil, oil and butter and onion start to go. Keeping that pan nice and hot. And I'm also going to drop in the sausage. And let all of this start to cook together. Because of these flavors, onions, butter, olive oil, nice Italian turkey sausage, that's a lot of flavor right there. So I don't need to really add anything to this. And th this is a time right here. This is when people are going to naturally want to throw in salt and pepper and oregano, basil, gut, gut, all that. You don't need it. You don't need it. Let the flavors be natural. Let the sausage be the flavor. Let the onions be the flavor and just let this cook. We will add seasoning in our cheese mixture. We're going to have seasoning from the marinara sauce that we're going to use. We don't need to overpower this. Let's just let this go. Let that cook for a few minutes. That will be perfect. Check on these noodles. You really need a large pot when you're cooking shells. Any pasta you should be cooking in a big pot. It needs room to cook. But shells especially, they take up a lot of space. They need to be able to move. Beautiful. Let's let this go for a few minutes. So it's going to seem like a lot of moving parts because you do have multiple pans going and things going on. And it is. It's a lot of moving parts. The nice thing though is you have more time than you might think. We're letting that go. Sausage and onions are cooking. They're still browning. We've got time for that. Looks like our pasta, these shells, you want them just at an al dente texture just when they start to soften up is when you want to get these out of the hot and be gentle with them you don't want them to rip because that does happen there get those out of the heat and 
and quickly under cold water. Very, very important because I want to slow down the cooking process. Can you drop ice cubes in here? Sure, but I don't need them to be that cold. I just want to cool it down real fast. If you can rub your hands through here and separate them all out and it's not too hot for your hands, that's perfect. And that's it. Just cool them down. Get them nice and cooled off, separated apart. Shake them off. Get all the water out of there. And then now they can just sit for a moment. Once you've got a nice brown color to your sausage, we'll just go ahead and throw in our radicchio and stir that in there. And we're really going to let this go for a couple minutes because I want this radicchio to soften up and cook down. Fantastic. Now this is all being done on a medium heat. Don't need a lot of high heat. We want to let it take its time. Doesn't need to happen fast. Just going to let that cook together for a little while. And while that's cooking, we can make our cheese blend, cheese mixture. I like spatulas. So to do this, we're going to take our Fontina cheese. If you take that one block, that block I had was about 0.6 of a pound, and that's going to easily give you a cup and a half of beautiful Fontina cheese. And we're going to dump in some fresh shaved Parmesan, about three quarters of a cup, and then ricotta. You can get ricotta cheese at the store in anywhere from I think 10 ounce to 15 ounce containers. Get the bigger one. Gotta have your ricotta cheese. And then your seasonings. This is what I was talking about when I said we're gonna add seasoning. We're gonna add it into the cheese mixture. We've got a half a teaspoon of each in here of salt, ground black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, basil and oregano half a teaspoon of each. We're just going to dump that right here in this cheese and mix it together. And lastly, we're going to add some egg. I'm only going to use the egg white. Come on, you've seen my videos. I use egg white as much as possible. You don't need more than that. Don't need the yolk. For this, the egg white is perfect couple of egg whites. There we go. And we're going to mix it all together. Just folding it over. When you read a recipe and it says to fold it together, you're folding over. When you fold, the folding process allows air to get in. And when you fold egg, and you allow that egg to get it, uh, egg to mix with air like this, makes it fluffy. So we're just folding everything together, and that's it. Now this can sit while we wait for the sausage and radicchio to be done cooking. Look how that all cooks down and comes together. See when you start mixing this. That huge container of radicchio is getting soft. It's cooking down. This is all browning so nicely. Perfect. There. That's all we needed to do. It's just like you just saw. Cook down, come together. The butter, oil. Oh, that smells good. Sausage, onions, radicchio. Perfect. See, I know it's cooked. Because I didn't add the radicchio until I knew the turkey sausage was cooked and browned. 
after that it was just a matter of getting all this to marinate together so now that we've got this done we are going to add this directly into the cheese mixture oh that is fantastic let's mix all this really want to incorporate it all the fontina is melting the parmesan is melting because of the heat this is really coming together as more of a paste now which is exactly the consistency that we want to stuff those shells how fabulous does that look so now that that is done Let's make our shells. You need to make sure your oven is preheated, 375, 375 degrees. Get yourself a nice 9 by 13 baking dish. And we are going to take our marinara sauce. To really do this recipe, you need easy three, three and a half cups of marinara sauce. So if you're going to buy some jars of your favorite sauce, Fantastic. I highly recommend it. If you want to make your own sauce from scratch, that's also fun. There's a video on it, so go back and check out the video I did on making your marinara sauce from scratch. The one disclaimer I'll give you, if you're using that recipe, make sure you take the marinara sauce we made in that video, dump the whole thing in a blender, and puree it all up so it has a nice, fine, loose consistency for this dish. But you want to take some of your sauce and spread it on the bottom of your pan, your baking sheet, your pan, whatever you want to call it. And this is what we are going to cook our shells in. There. Now, after we do that, I'm going to take your shells. Get yourself a nice rounded teaspoon is perfect. And this is where the fun begins. I'm going to take a shell. Just get a spoonful and round it off in there. There. That's it. See that? Perfect. See? And we are just going to put it down sitting it right in the sauce. You want all of these shells stuffed and in the baking sheet as close together as you can get them. Nice tight little community of stuffed shells. For those of you who are watching this who have never done this before, you are going to make a mess. It's okay. Your hands get dirty. So what? It's fun. As Jason says, cooking is about making a mess and having fun. So make a mess and have fun. And while you're watching me do this, you can look below in the description. You'll have all the details of exactly what you need. If you've been watching so far, it's not much. It's really easy to do. It just takes a little time. But you've got the description there of everything you need. You've also got that subscribe button. So if you haven't done so yet, click that button. Turn your notifications on. So you can see what we've got coming up next. Watch all the stuff we've done so far. This is the perfect time to do that. Yeah, let's get these done. So, just about getting these done. Look at that. My wife saved me. How great of an idea is that? She had a nice little ice cream scoop. Talk about makes life easier. And of course, I didn't think of it. She did. So, once again, give her credit because, well, she deserves it. If it wouldn't be for her, I'd be covered in this stuff, making a huge mess. But that is part of the fun. And we are just about there. You will more than likely have more shells than you do stuffing. But now, I'd really be been stuffing these because I like them nice and full so 
you want to do more than one dish worth, you absolutely can. And just pack them in. Now, once you have them all stuffed, I'm going to take your sauce and just drizzle more on top. Doesn't have to be heaping amounts, but you want to get some sauce everywhere for these shells to cook in. Just kind of lightly spread it around. Now, we got some sauce on top, not too much. I know it seems like a lot, but it's not because it's going to soak up. And the last thing, pick your cheese, the Fontina or the Parmesan. I, we, this house, we really like fresh Parmesan cheese. So I am going to put it all over the top. You could do the Fontina as well, but like I said, I like the flavor that fresh shaped Parmesan has. I also like the way it looks. Look how pretty that is. There we go. That is ready to go. Looking fantastic. Now, as I said, we went ahead and preheated the oven to 375 degrees. I'm going to take this. Put her in and let it go for about 40 minutes. Just keeping an eye on it every once in a while. Letting it cook at 375 for 40 minutes and then taking it out. And you're going to see just how amazing these look. I think we're there. Yes, we, whoo, there's a wafting gorgeous smell on the face. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That is what you want. You cook this for a good 40, 42 minutes at the most. Because you want to get a golden brown crispy top. And there it is. Oh, that is gorgeous. Take a look at this. How beautiful did that come out? See how the Parmesan crisps up so nicely? And we're done. Look at that. A dish like this, oh, turn the oven off. Something like this speaks for itself. It doesn't need any help from anything else to go with it. It's just this. Now, here's a very important point, tip, reminder at the end. This comes out of the oven, it's bubbling and piping hot, and it looks gorgeous just like this, and you're so excited to eat it that you want to serve immediately and just go. Don't do that. It's got to sit. You've got to let this sit 10, 15 minutes. Let the boiling of the sauce come down. Let all the cheese gooey back up. All those flavors come together. When it's piping hot like this and you start to scoop it out, it just becomes a mess and it goes everywhere. It loses flavor. It loses consistency. Let it stay together, tightly packed in the dish for about 15 minutes. It's got to sit. And then you serve. I promise you it is still going to be piping hot, but you get so much more flavor after it sits. But I mean, does this not look amazing? I'm going to probably have to try. I, I'm not going to be able to wait 15 minutes, but wow. And it was fun. They, like I said, there was a lot of moving parts, but it's on purpose. You can do a lot. You have a lot of time while those noodles are cooking. But that's it. Try this. Enjoy it. There's a lot of stuffed shell recipes out there. This one's fun because it's different. We threw in the sausage and we threw in the radicchio. We put that Parmesan on top at the end. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it with everyone you know. Enjoy the cooking, folks. I'll see you in a few days. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care. Bye-bye.